Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to discuss whether you should make topspin with your wrist or with the pronation of the forearm. So let's get right into it. You should never try to make topspin on your forehand with the wrist or with the pronation of the forearm. And in fact, this is a big problem at the recreational level. Players that try to use their wrist or their forearm often experience problems on their forehand as a result of it. One common problem that a lot of recreational players experience if they try to make topspin with the wrist is that they start framing a lot of balls. And this has to do that the racket head is suddenly changing direction. So at the moment of contact, the racket is moving this way and players are often mistiming the contact and therefore catching the ball on the frame. So let me try to hit three forehands by rolling my wrist around the ball. Let's see if I catch the frame on any of them. And there you go. A second attempt, I caught the frame. So what you need to understand is that the moment of contact is the most important thing on any shot in tennis, but especially on the forehand. If you, at the moment of contact, suddenly turn the racket this way, this will often cause you to miss hit the ball or even worse, catch it with the frame. In that case, you completely lose control over the ball. Another common problem players experience if they try to use the wrist or the forearm at the moment of contact is a severe loss of power. So what happens when players do this movement of the racket right at the moment of contact, that the swing path is too vertical. In other words, the racket is going straight up on the ball this way. This might work well on an angle forehand or on a topspin lob, but if you're looking for power, this will drastically reduce the power on your forehand because you're gonna be hitting the ball too thin. So take a look at my forehand here. I'm gonna roll my wrist over the ball. You can see that I'm getting a ton of topspin, but it's very difficult to create depth and power. Let me try one more. See, I'm getting a very little depth on this ball. And now, as opposed to a regular forehand where I'm not using my wrist at the moment of contact, you can see that I'm getting topspin, but there's a lot more bigger impact onto the ball, and I'm getting more depth and more power. Another possible problem, and this might be the worst one of them all, that players will possibly experience if they overuse their wrist or their forearm is possible tennis elbow or even worse, a wrist injury. And this will naturally happen if you overuse the wrist. The primary role of the wrist at the moment of contact on any shot in tennis, but especially the forehand, is stability. And the way we get stability on the forehand is by wrist extension. Basically, wrist extension means that the wrist is gonna be moving upwards in a position like this. So you can picture yourself hitting the ball with your hand. When the hand is extended, this is a very stable position. And now, if I turn my wrist this way, all of a sudden it becomes a lot less stable. And the same thing happens on the forehand. If I maintain this angle, of my wrist at the moment of contact, I'm gonna have maximum stability. Because let's face it, when we're hitting the forehand at very high speeds, the stability of the racket head at the moment of contact is crucial. And it's not only crucial so that you can have control while having power, but it's also crucial that the wrist is protected. Think about it this way. The wrist is a very fragile piece of the human body. It is absolutely impossible to use the wrist when the forehand stroke accelerates up to 100 miles an hour. This would not be able to be sustained for long periods of time. Eventually, wrist injury would set in as a result of that. So what naturally happens on all high-level forehands, including Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal, is that the wrist is stable at the moment of contact and shortly afterwards. I call this a passive wrist. Some people misunderstand this and they think that the wrist is very loose. It is not necessarily loose. There is some stability applied to the wrist in an extended position. The forearm muscles are helping to provide the stability, but naturally the body will not allow you to hurt itself unless you force it to. So what happens naturally on hall high level tops and forehands is that the wrist is not moving at contact or shortly after. If you take any high level forehand in slow motion, you can uh, screen record a video of Federer or Nadal and then you're gonna put it in a software where you can scroll. You can even do this on your iPhone. You can go frame by frame. So you take the frame when the player makes contact. Now the second frame is gonna look like this. The third frame is gonna look like this. So there's gonna be absolutely no movement of the wrist shortly after contact. The ball has already left the racket and the wrist remains in a stable position for two to three frames afterwards. However, at this point is where the wrist or the forearm gets activated. So yes, there will be some pronation of the forearm in some instances. And yes, there might be some movement of the wrist in some instances as well. But the fact is that the wrist is absolutely not moving at contact 
and shortly thereafter. Another problem a lot of recreational players experience if they try to use the wrist or the forearm at contact is timing. You got to realize that the forehand contact point is over in a few milliseconds. So it would be absolutely impossible to make the timing accurate if you're trying to use the wrist right at the ball. Often players will mistime the ball. As I explained previously, it will result in frame shots. It will also result in you spraying the ball wildly all over the court. Naturally, what happens when players are trying to make this timing easier, they will abruptly shorten the stroke. So if a player is using the wrist, it's very easy to see because the stroke will abruptly stop right around here. And it kind of ends in this area because the player is so concentrated on using the wrist right at contact, the stroke is therefore slowed down just so that the wrist can be used at the moment of contact. Now, the confusing thing about tennis sometimes is that if you talk to high level players, they might tell you, yes, I'm using the wrist on the forehand. And, and if you take a look in slow motion, you will see that they're not. So how is this possible? Well, it's possible that the player is not quite aware what goes on in, in the contact zone is that it's over so fast. The contact is so quick on any shot in tennis, but especially the forehand. At the high level, the racket sometimes accelerates to 100 miles an hour. So players are really not quite aware what happens in this area of the stroke and is solely relying on feel and muscle memory. So a player who, for example, activates the wrist well after contact, it might feel to a player as if they were using the wrist. So even if I hit this forehand, I try to use my wrist a little more, uh, I'm 100% sure that I didn't use the wrist at contact, but I do feel the wrist more because I'm bending it here. But my muscle memory and the correct fundamentals are not allowing me to use the wrist anyway. The only way I would be able to use the wrist on the forehand is by abruptly stopping and slowing down this area of the stroke and the forehand will look like this. Just me simply rolling over the ball this way and the stroke would abruptly be shortened because of that. And guys, it is actually very useful to try to use the wrist or the pronation of the forearm on the finish. I do this with a lot of my students who are trying to get more spin. For example, if I command the student to try to finish with the back of the hand towards the non-dominant cheek, so in my case it's my right hand towards my left cheek, this is basically a pronation of the forearm that's going to help me with a more vertical swing path. Now naturally this is not going to happen right at contact, it is going to happen closer to the finish. So if I command the player to do a pronation of the forearm on the finish, usually the contact that shortly thereafter will be without this pronation. And then once the racket gets to about this place, the player will then start to pronate the arm and turn the racket over this way. You gotta remember that the consciousness on the forehand is regained when the tip of the racket is pointing upwards. This is when players have more control over what they're doing with the racket. And the same goes for the wrist. I'm not opposed to using the wrist on the finish. Now, I don't necessarily teach this method because I have found that some players experience pain in flexing the wrist downwards on the finish. So this is up to the player. If they feel comfortable doing this, uh, they can. I'm a much bigger fan of the pronation of the forearm on the finish. It's a much cleaner stroke. It doesn't involve the wrist quite as much. But again, both of these things uh, might be good things to do on your finish. This might help you get a more vertical swing path and therefore get more topspin on your forehand.